Ah, Corsica, l'île de beauté de Beauty Island. If you don't know that place, this is the best French island you can visit. It sits on the Mediterranean next to Sicily. So imagine you get the most beautiful water, beautiful seaside. But on top of that, you've got, of course, the food. The Corsicans are actually quite a bit of a special bunch. They would absolutely hate <laughs> to hear you say they're French. And they would also not want to hear that they are Italians, even though they are next to Italy and France, but they are just Corsican. They do things their own way, and especially when it comes to food. Now, the good thing with Corsica is that there's a mountain in the middle, and they got everything there. They got the cured meat, the cured ham, their own sausage, their own stock, fruit, veggies, plus all the things from the continent and from Italy. They eat lots of pizzas, lots of pastas, etc., etc. But the way they cook, is actually quite interesting. And this is what we're going to discover today with the Corsican beef stew. Now that recipe is really special because it uses kind of two techniques, the French one and the Italian one. The stew is made the typical French fashion. Pieces of beef, you can have some bacon, some garlic, some white wine, it's a tomato base. It's going to be slow cooked in the oven, right? For two or three hours, like a bourguignon kind of thing. But when the meat is cooked, what's happening is something totally different that we don't do in France. They take the meat, they take it apart, and all the sauce that you've made is then stir through large macaroni pastas to make a pasta dish. And they serve this pasta covered in sauce with the meat and cover the whole lot with Parmesan cheese. Oh, good shivers. <laughs> Just talking about it. <laughs> Needless to say, this is going to be a special one and a really good recipe to try. So let's start with the ingredients. Of course, you'll find everything on the recipe card. What's important first off here, the beef has to be cut in large, thick slices like this, and it will shrink while cooking. It has to be something that is suited for braising or slow cooking, any cut uh, that you like. The mushrooms, the recipe calls for dried porcini mushroom. I only have a leftover morel that are absolutely beautiful that I'm going to use instead. But I love the fact that it's using dry mushroom because you can have them in your cupboard and take them out at any time. The rest, simple garlic, rosemary, some onions. The bacon, usually it is lardon, which is a slab that you cut in matchstick style. I could only find these thin slices, but we're still going to be able to use that. For the rest, just some passata, which is a tomato sauce, some white wine, usually a dry one, and the... The pasta I'm going to be using is the only one I found again at my shop. Bigger would be better, but you want something large like this. They're really going to go oversized and perfect to capture all that sauce. But for the rest, that's it. Now let me show you how we're going to be cutting the onion and what we're going to do with these pieces of meat here. Very important that. For the food preparation, the cutting, the slicing, measure everything. Starting with the onion, cut in half and then sliced. The beef, like I showed you, large cubes. The garlic, you want to make little slivers like this, little matchstick, and the rest, half of the garlic like this, and the rest you can just crush it or mince it, up to you. The bacon, ideally matchstick, but if you don't have matchstick, try to get little square because we're going to do something special with the meat with that. And to finish, your dried mushroom, you soak them 30 minutes in boiling water. And we're about 100 ml of water in there, this is my morels, okay? Now let me show you what's going to happen with this. This is the special thing here. So what exactly is that special technique we're doing with the meat? It's an ancient technique used for the boeuf bourguignon, and I'm glad to see it's making a comeback in that Corsican uh, stew here. So what it consists of is you take your piece of beef and you infuse or you stuff each piece of meat with garlic and bacon. This is why you need matchsticks. So I've already made, you make a cavity with a knife, an opening inside, okay, so you got a hole. And you're putting one piece of garlic, one sliver of garlic in there, followed by a piece of bacon. Okay, and you stuff that in there, and that's the piece of meat. And you're going to repeat the same thing for each piece of meat. That's the little technique. And by the way, if you're not sure how to make this incision, don't go poking like this from above because you may cut yourself. Always you take your piece of meat flat, and you put your hand flat, your blade under, very sharp knife, and you're going to be slicing. I mean, like, like, almost like if you were slicing it up, like filleting, okay? And you make a cavity in there. And you don't kind of try to poke a hole like this in your thing, you're going to cut yourself. So flat, put your knife, slice, and you get an opening. That's it. 
And voila, we are ready to go on the stove. I've got the onion slice, I've got the bay leaf and the rosemary, the extra bacon, the extra garlic, three tablespoons of the passata. I've got the mushroom ready still in their juice, on their essence, or their brine, whatever you call it. I've got the wine as measured, the meat has been filled with garlic and bacon. And the mushroom, if you use morel, for each one you need to, you know, pat them dry and rinse them on the cold water to make sure there's no scent. You're going to be keeping the juice of the mushroom, we're going to be using it. When we're ready, get your pot, cast iron, or oven proof dish, and let's go on the stove. And now let's start the recipe. You'll be glad to hear that most of the work is done. But like any slow cooked dish, the first step consists of browning the pieces of meat. So I'm taking a cast iron pot here with one and a half tablespoon to two tablespoon of olive oil. And the meat has been seasoned already with salt and pepper. And I'm gonna brown each side. Now you want a nice coloration on each side. So I'm gonna turn the piece to show you. You see, that kind of brown. When it's like this, you turn over. So you're gonna repeat for all of the pieces of meat, brown like this on each side, and then reserve everything back onto a plate before we do the onions. As soon as the meat is browned, I'm gonna add the bacon, or the leftover bacon, and the onion. Reduce the heat to medium, and we're gonna cook this for a nice 10 minutes. After a good 10 minutes, you can see your onions. I've captured everything, you see the oil that starts to, to come out, it's not watery anymore. And you have that look of cooked onion, you see how they look like, you see they, can, they, can, they start to become very soft. So now it's time to add all of the garlic. Cook this for two minutes and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. That looks pretty good, I can smell the garlic, it starts to be fragrant. So from now on, up, meat juices, the meat in there, we're going to give it a bit of a... A bit of a mix first with the onions and everything else. Okay, not much, just a bit like this. We're gonna follow up with two bay leaf, a piece of the rosemary here. What do I have got here? Mushrooms, why not? Remember, you have to rinse the inside. We're gonna add a little bit of the passata and of course, the wine. I'm gonna put that on the side. Now to finish, usually you put a pinch of cinnamon in there, interesting. But I am gonna use one of these little sticks like things, okay? Boom, in there. Yeah, it's in here, so now we can gently mix the whole lot. Okay, so there's a pre-cooking time here of 30 minutes before we add the, that mushroom essence in there. And maybe top up with a bit of water. So I'm gonna leave this to simmer for a good 30 minutes. I think I'm gonna partly cover it as well to avoid too much evaporation. I'm taking a lead, 30 minutes. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look. 30 minutes. Ooh. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Now, what we need to do from here after 30 minutes is to pre it however at 160 degrees Celsius and then put this mushroom uh, liquor, as we said, okay. But I, I'm gonna add a little bit of cognac because I can't resist. So that has come down in temperature. We're gonna raise the heat up a little bit and bring this back to a simmer. It's simmering, simmering, I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna try this, the sauce already because that's an indicator of how good it's gonna become. Ooh, that's good. You know some people talk about the last meal, now that could qualify as a last meal. So I'm gonna put the, the lid on and we're gonna cook this in the oven until the meat falls apart almost, so like two and a half hours, something like this. And you can check it as time goes to make sure the meat is not overcooking. But in the oven, 160 degrees Celsius until it's ready. And then we'll share the result together, can't wait. After two and a half hour, a bit more, this is what you're gonna have. Let me tell you, I've added a little bit more water during the cooking, but look at that result. Look at these colors, it is intensely beefy, it's reduced totally. And that is the typical French side of the dish. So usually in France, You've got this, you're ready. Now in Corsica, they go that one step further. What they're doing, they're scooping off the meat out of the dish, cover it with sauce and a bit of mushroom, and they're gonna use the other half of the sauce as a steer through from the pasta. So you're gonna take a big pot of boiling water, boil some pasta, I'm using rigatoni, you can use macaroni, some nice tubular pastas, and when they're ready, we're gonna steer this through and then serve, okay? So scoop the meat out, in a bowl, bit of sauce, bit of mushroom, keep this warm in the oven, prepare your pasta, and then I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work with that stir through and the serving and everything. 
Right, so my pastas are smoking hot and they are ready. Now, keep in mind that from here, you need to bring the heat to medium and you can freestyle the sauce. If you want to add a bit of cream in there, a bit more tomato, maybe a bit of more stock if you want more sauce and then reduce it a little bit, you can do this before you add the pasta. I'm just gonna respect the recipe because I would automatically add cream in there <laughs> because, you know, I love cream. But the idea is, all the pastas in, actually I've got a bit more here, Oh, let's not be greedy. Okay, and then we're gonna steer the thing through. So let the magic happen and transform. This is, I think, the ragu in, in Italy. This is how pastas are really made and they're just drenched into the, the meat juices of some dishes. It is not like always the bolognese that we know, you see? Look at this shredded meat. If you want, you could even shred all the meat and have this over the pasta. And that's it, we're ready to serve. I'm gonna take the meat, put this on the plate and add the final touch. So we've got the meat and the pastas, they're not boring, you know, they're covered with sauce in here. And I've got some extra uh, juices, meat juices, that I'm gonna use to avoid the meat from drying. A little bit on the pasta in there. But what we want here is this. <laughs> this is the Italian touch, Parmesan, by the bucket. And this is decadent, 101, juicy, meaty. Now the meat, look at that. It's shredding like hell. I can put shreds of meat on here, over my pastas, you know, it's nice and cooked. You know what, let me grab some meat, and try some of these macaronis there. I'm starving, some Parmesan. If I want, you know what, I'm gonna take the whole sauce in there. I'm gonna take that, oh, it's falling apart, it's shredding, it's full of parmesan, it is gorgeous. But I'm gonna finish with a nice juicy bit with mushroom and we'll leave it there. Mm, mm, mm. Absolute goodness. Now that was a superbly tasting dish, super comfort food, the Corsican beef stew, half French, half Italian, and really it comes together at the end. And when you have the pasta for the sauce, the Parmesan and the meat, wow, this is really where the dish shines. As I said, you can flavor that sauce differently. If you want to add cream, stock, fresh herbs or spices, make it your own. You can also make the dish ahead of time, like the meat the day before, like it's when the guests arrive, you warm up the meat, cook the pasta, mix everything together, and serve. Easy peasy. Now, if you've never tried that recipe and you're curious, even though as a pasta dish, this is one I super highly recommend. It is tasty, okay? See you in the next video.